What's going on, everybody? So today I've got some musical effects for you. I'd like to give a huge shout out to my sponsors, Habtag. Just kidding, they're not my sponsors, but they are good people. So, all right, enough of that crap, right? So I was asked to make another video. Uh, I don't know why, um, but I've got Ryan Brown seven one three four wants to know. Hey Roman, can you explain the purpose of high and low side equalizer pipes on the PYDNs? And also why we got rid of them. And of course I can. So when we talk about older model, older series pieces of equipment, such as VRV3, uh, VRV2, you might find heat recovery and heat pumps with four refrigerant lines. And although three is already confusing enough, let's count them here. You've got one, you've got two, you've got three, and you've got four refrigerant lines. You say, wait a minute. Daikin VRV, VRF, depending on who you're trying to piss off here, uh, it only it only has three pipes, right? Mitsubishi has two, Daikin has three. What do you mean there is four pipe VRF? Like, it's already hard enough to get our minds around two and three, and now you're telling me that we have four pipes? And I'd say, yes, the older series of equipment actually has four, right? One, two, three, four lines. Okay, well, why is that? And what was the change that took place? Because, right, this is the whole purpose of this video. So I'm going to let it play. And as it plays, I'm going to give you this annotation of what's exactly going on and why. When our system starts up, now remember, this is dual module, right? These are two modules. This is an RUMQ, let's say, 120 PYDN series. Or even an RXYQ. But this is heat recovery, so REYQ, right? First, okay, here's the first golden nugget of the video. The first letters in the model number determine the type of equipment that it is. RXYQ is a heat pump. REYQ is a heat recovery. So that X and that E are the differentiating purposes in the model number to tell you what type of unit you're working on. So again, if it's an REYQ, REYQ, heat recovery, RXYQ, right? Not the social media platform, but XYQ is a heat pump. All right. So we've already started here because I've been dragging my feet talking to you about this. We're going to stop it, right? Before it gets confusing, before we get all into the weeds about all this crap, here we are. So, so far we see that we have two pipes that have been kind of clearly labeled for us. We know that red up here is liquid and the other one here now is hot gas. And you're asking, okay, well, that's easy enough. We know that heat recovery has a hot gas line and a, a liquid line. But I'm in cooling operation right now, so I don't really have a hot gas line that's leaving the unit. What you're going to find in VRV3, we have a what we call a equalizer pipe, right? That equalizer pipe is designed to share hot gas between the modules. And you'll notice there's no four-way valve here. So this line from this port all the way down to this port is dedicated hot gas, right? This, there's a purpose for this, right? Why would we need a dedicated line for hot gas from both modules all the time? And that is, especially in heat recovery, is because VRV3 only had one outdoor heat exchanger. Well, you say, okay, well, we all know that. Um, why is that important? Well, because if you only have one outdoor heat exchanger, what do we know about parallel operation and heat recovery? Well, in parallel operation, we have to have the ability to send, right, liquid refrigerant and turn it to a vapor in one coil and hot gas turning it to a liquid in the other coil. We have to have a condenser and an evaporator at the same time at the outdoor network, at the outdoor system. Well, you can't have that if you have one coil. So how do you achieve that on the older series of equipment? We have a shared hot gas line that allows us to send hot gas to one outdoor module while the other one is in an evaporative state, right? We can do that because we can send it between the two on this shared line between both units. So again, heat recovery VRV3 series, there are four lines. You are not mistaken. One of those lines is shared hot gas between the modules. And I've had an issue in the past where actually someone forgot to cut off the actual service nipple right here, right? Yes, I did say the word nipple. And the unit was going off on high head pressure when it tried to send hot gas to the other module when it was doing compressor rotation operation, right? Outdoor module rotation. We know that thing exists because you watched my last video. 
And when it went to go do that, it would run fine. It would run fine in this module here. And then as soon as it tried to shift this four-way valve and send a hot gas to this module, now it doesn't have to do anything to send hot gas to this module. It should already be going to this module. But as soon as it shifted this four-way valve, it deadheaded the unit because this was not cut off and they had brazed it right over. Now, both service valves were open. And how did I find something like that? Well, the unit went off on 650 head pressure and went into restart standby immediately. You went and restart the unit. It would run on this module again, no issues. And as soon as it went to go, the demand increased and it tried to run both modules in the same mode. It sent hot gas to this module trying to shift the four-way valve and it deadheaded again, right? We determined that because I looked at the lines and I measured the temperature on this line following it all the way back to this module and found that there was a temperature differential across this valve. It was hot on one side, it was cold on the other. And that was an immediate red flag to me that there's no pressure getting through this valve, right? Shut off the service valve here, shut off the service valve here, remove the refrigerant from that line, stuck a piece of silver solder down through the Schrader core and hit the actual service cap on it. Cut the line out, come to find out, when they went to go and install these lines, they never actually cut the nipple off. And they actually overheated it because the little tiny piece of silver solder at the base of it was completely melted away. All right. So four lines, right? Let's, let's keep this animation going, right? Let's keep, uh, let's keep this moving in the right direction. No dead silences here. Okay, here we go. In cooling mode, we have two suction lines, one liquid line, and one shared hot gas line. And now let me show you what that purpose actually is for when we switch over the modes here. And again, there's a, there's a long pause here because these animations are fairly slow. Uh, this one does not let you skip ahead like the others do. So actually, you know what? There's even great music that we could play for you. Oh, yes. If you guys ever wondered what elevator music might have sounded like in the 80s, I'm uh, pretty sure that's this right here. Just, just get swept away in the music and the refrigerant diagram, guys. Okay, I can't take it. So we can see here now that we're sending hot gas between modules, but also we're sending hot gas down the dual gas line. So remember, three lines in VRF when it comes to Daikin, when it comes to Hisense, um, other brands out there, major brands. It's only usually Mitsubishi that you have that two pipe. And so we have that suction line, dedicated suction. We have dedicated liquid, and then we have a dual gas line. Dual gas line, why is it dual? Because again, when it's in cooling, it's 100% suction. When it's in heating, it's 100% hot gas, right? And you can see how one condenser is going into a liquid mode, right? Not liquid mode, condensing mode, right? Outdoor heat exchanger is condensing liquid, is generating liquid. That liquid then gets fed back over to the other module, right, as you can see, and it's going to go into this heat exchanger, which is in an evaporative state. You'll notice how there's no flow going down this line. Well, why is that? That's because, right, it's not using this outdoor heat exchanger. So this is pumping it this way, and it's also pumping it this way. Now, again, if those got out of balance, and let's say that the head pressure being generated here was faster, higher, higher velocity volume than over here, then sure, it would equalize by going down here and then feeding over to this coil. Again, remember these systems are variable speed, guys. You've got two inverter compressors, one here and one here, and a standard and another standard. They're going to change speeds based upon the load demand in the building. This is four pipe heat recovery. And as you can see, we're starting to jog back down here and then we'll turn this last line into suction gas. Okay. Enough of all that, right? Let's actually jump over to some service manuals, right? So this is, let's see here, REYQ, right? This is the animation that we just saw here. You'll notice on REYQ, right? Which is different than REMQ. REMQ is, is separate modules, right? So VRV3, they love to make it confusing. There's a bunch of different flavors out there. REMQ is the standalone modules that cannot run by themselves. They require a partner, right? Sometimes that's a thruple. I don't judge. So you've got three outdoor units or two outdoor units, but the REMQ series requires you to have another module tied in with it because we just learned it has one outdoor heat exchanger. So it requires two outdoor heat exchangers to be in the same circuit in order to do parallel operation for heat recovery. This is a REYQ 7296 and 120. Now the 144 just has two inverter compressors as opposed to a standard, which we can see here, right? There's a standard on one side and there's an inverter on the other. However, 
you'll say, well, Roman, it's the same series and the same design. Where's the equalizer line? And what you'll do is if you take the panels off that unit, you'll find that the equalizer line is actually here. It goes between the two modules where the shared hot gas line is. So they didn't get rid of it. They just put it inside the machine because, again, you're not tying multiple modules like this together. It's just one module with two separate sides and also two separate heat exchangers. They split it in the middle, one on the left, one on the right. Right. This is VRV3 REYQ, right? heat recovery in the smaller capacity. So this would be if you only needed a 72 or a 96, a 120 or a 144. When your capacity goes over that 144 mark, that's when you start getting the REMQ, which is the standalone units that require a pair. right? And those only have one outdoor heat exchanger and have larger tonnage chassis. Let's keep this train moving, right? Let's jump over to heat pump. Because heat pump has the same thing. And for this one, it's a little bit different, right? And where are the differences? Here we still have four pipes. However, you'll see that those other two pipes are connected to each other internally. So you have an equalizing pipe here and you have a common suction pipe connected to the two. So again, you're going to find out their older series of equipment because they're coming up on their, their 12, 13, 14 year marks as a series in the United States market that these are going to start having issues, they're going to start having failures, and you're going to start replacing them, and you're going to go out of the field, and you're going to look at this, and you're going to go, um, no one ever taught me about four-pipe VRF. And again, this is just this particular series, and I'll show you VRVX here in a second uh, to jump over and kind of go through that one as well to show you why we changed it and what we did. And so again here, this is RXYQ 7296120PYDN series, Right, the last digits are actually voltage, right? PTJU 208240, PYDN, right? It's the T G A U Y D N. If you go in the actual service manual, I know, right? Service manual, what is that? Um, what we're looking at right now. So now you can say you've seen one. In the service manual, these are differences in voltage as well as also series of equipment because they did add some other flavors throughout there. PBTJ, um, it gets a little weird, uh, but. However, these are voltages. They are not the specific heat pump heat recovery. Again, this is VRV3. So, so these are the tonnages of this one, and then these are the available tonnages of this one over here. And either way, you still only have one outdoor heat exchanger here and also one outdoor heat exchanger here. And so because of that, even though it may be a heat pump, we have what's called simultaneous defrost, right? So this is cooling operation. This is heating operation cooling operation, uh, in oil return, heating operation, and oil return. I mean, they give you all these flow diagrams in the manual for the specific modes so that when you're looking at service checker data, you can actually compare what you're seeing to what the unit is actually doing in the data to understand if there's an issue. They show you where the flow is going because there is no animated diagram in service checker, unfortunately. So here is partial defrosting. So again, with two heat pumps, the, the selling point of VRV3 over VRV2 was simultaneous defrost. And it's not really at the same time. It's just that nonstop heating capacity on the indoor unit while you're defrosting one module. So you'll notice here that this coil is defrosting while this one is still generating capacity and heating capacity. It's turning liquid to a vapor so they can then deliver hot gas to the indoor units. And so this is continuous heating for VRV3 as a heat pump. And to do that, we have to have an equalizer line and also a common suction line. Because again, if these compressors are running and these compressors are running, and this is the only module that is generating vapor, what well, has to get that vapor to the other module? And it does that through that equalizer line right here on this heat pump. So again, heat pump still has four lines like heat recovery. However, the purpose of it is because of simultaneous defrost. And when we say simultaneous, it doesn't happen at the same time. It's just uninterrupted heating at low ambience or in whatever ambience that it's in. But either way, it doesn't stop heating inside. And that was a huge selling factor for VRV3 at the time. But that's why we have four lines on heat pump. And that's how we have four lines on heat recovery. Now you know the difference. And lastly, here we have the VRVX. I know I hate to bring this show to a close, but... There's only so much we can do here, guys. In VRVX, VRV4, Aurora, Emerion is the change we made for going to multiple heat exchangers in the outdoor unit as a standard. You'll notice we have a upper right here. We have a lower, and then we have a dedicated loop to the inverter heat sink, which we added. 
VRV3, if we jump back over, you'll notice there is no inverter loop heatsink because these inverter boards in this module and this type of series were air cooled at the time, which means that they can get dirty, they can get clogged, and they can overheat. That doesn't happen very often, but again, these are the series changes that we're covering right now. So here we only have three pipes and only need three pipes. Now, what is the main difference here? is yes, we have more heat exchangers. They're in the same outdoor unit, so you don't need to have multiple outdoor units. However, when you do have other multiple outdoor units, you have to remember there are limitations by not having that four pipe, right? That four pipe is that shared hot gas line. And that just means that instead of sending hot gas to another module, if we're in cooling mode or looking for some kind of uh, you know, defrost, it just means that we're not able to send refrigerant specifically from one module bypassing the piping network to do a specific mode or special kind of type of, of cooling or heating at the time. And it's not a bad thing because you have to remember the larger the equipment got, the, the higher the series got from VRV4 to VRVX, we made them bigger, right? Larger compressors, larger capacity. And so the need to send hot gas to other modules isn't really there anymore. And so they kind of just ixnade the entire idea and they focused on something like this, which still works. However, there's just, you know, there's those limitations of being able to defrost at the same time using the same hot gas from one module. And it's not a bad thing because let's talk about oil return, which we've talked about many, many, many times. Using a hot gas line share between modules, even if it's three or four or five modules, which doesn't happen, but three modules at the most, you do have that chance of, of hot gas carrying oil going to that module and then the oil levels being imbalanced between the two. So we kind of just, again, we got rid of that equalizer line after VRV3. VRV4 does not have it. VRVX, which is 4X, it's a flavor of four, uh, does not have it. And neither does Amirion and neither does Aurora. But again, this is the problem that we ran into with VRV3 and especially people nowadays is that sometimes no one piped these correctly. And because there was four lines and they're like, wait a minute, no one ever, heat pump is two. No one ever told me that there's four pipes. What am I supposed to do with these pipes? And they would hook them up to the wrong lines, right? They would hook the equalizer pipe up to the, uh, to the actual uh, main heating line or to the liquid line. Or, you know, instead of the dual pressure pipe, they'd hook this equalizer line to the dual pressure pipe. And then the, equal, then the dual pressure pipeline goes to the equalizer line. And it was a whole mess. So, you know, it's not uncommon to find something like this out in the field. However, it probably got its, you know, kinks worked out and fixed in the first five years of life after they had some failures associated with it. However, it's still important to understand the differences here between a four pipe VRF system like VRV3 series generation and what we have now and the advantages and disadvantages. Now, there isn't a lot of disadvantages with leaving it and removing it and not having it. However, it gets really confusing when you see something like this and you're trying to troubleshoot and you've never seen four pipe VRF before. So there you go. Introduced you to the world of four pipe VRF. You can go ahead and, and give me your applause. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. A little louder. Okay. No, that's good. Okay. 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 Shut. Okay. There we go. Anyways, keep sending me your comments, guys. Uh, I'm open to suggestions. I'm always here to help. I'd love making these videos for you. So um, yeah, if you have any other questions, shoot them to me and I would love to make a video about it. Appreciate it.